Let's talk about that thing a lot of people don't want to talk about in cryptocurrency, and that is NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Now, I've made previous videos explaining what NFTs are. I've showed you some celebrity and people that have NFTs on the market and places to go to find it. I will venture into that a little bit here, but I'm going to post that video like one of these spots so you can see it, and I don't want to waste your time. If you want to do more research, feel free. But I have recently sparked interest in an NFT platform because I'm not interested in anything in anything I can't understand and I don't understand how it's going to make me money. Me making money off of my money and that money making its own money is very, 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 very important in my investing strategy and it should be in yours. So let me tell you about an NFT platform I've fallen in love with, Zed.Run. Stick around. Hey YouTube, it's your girl Teddy Ewing, educating you on financial freedom through entrepreneurship, your hustle and your grind, and building generational wealth. Generational wealth built through investing stocks and cryptocurrency is a bit of my specialty. And today we're going to talk about Zed.Run, the um, digital horse racing and breeding platform that I'm just falling in love with more and more and more by the minute. And I'm actually have put a significant stake of um, investment into it. So let's just get right into it. So let's take a look at this platform, Zed.Run. What I love, love, love about this platform when you go to the home page is its layout. Um, the home page itself is not very informative, and I think it has a lot to be desired with explaining to the user what they need to do once they get here. I mean, there's a start button, right? When you click this button, start, it's immediately taking you into getting involved, right? And not immediately taking you into what is this thing and how do I get involved? So, you know, the homepage is whatever. But let's not even hold that against them. Let's, let's talk about the top, own, race, and earn. This is why I'm in love with this NFT platform. It's giving you an opportunity to own a stable, own horse or horses to put in that stable, breed those horses within that stable or with other horses outside of that stable, and or race your horse and races and win um, first, second, third, and maybe even fourth place while racing your horse. Um, or even just gambling on a horse race itself. So I've named like six different ways you can make money on Zed.Run. That is why I like it. That's why I prefer it over a Crypto Kitty, a Crypto Punk, um, something on Beeple, any of that where you're just buying an NFT to say, hey, look, I have this very expensive thing. Do you want to buy it from me? Because this has some utility. This you can find enjoyment. This you can find some entertainment. This you can find ownership. So it's helping me get involved in the NFT world and I get something in return. It's not this facade, this fake, arbitrary, lack of intrinsic value NFT that I have to prove is worth something or is only worth something to a bunch of weirdos or people who like this this thing, right? This is something everybody can get behind. I've enjoyed my times when I went to Vegas and I'm betting on horses or on the slot machine or playing poker. Now that I've kind of matured in my uh, money management, I don't gamble as often because I feel like every dollar I spend that's not buying Bitcoin or Ethereum or putting it into a stock or an EFT that's going to make, I'm sorry, ETF that's going to make some money, um, I feel like I'm wasting it. So I don't gamble nearly as much as I used to in my 20s. But I find enjoyment. I get the rush. I've been at a, a horse um, racing track and I get it. I love it. And this brings me back there. And the most beautiful part is I get to be an owner of the horses and not just someone throwing that money out to the owner and the horse racing, um, what are they called? 
it's not a stable, but like the downs, the downs that own the the activity, they're getting the money, the owner's getting the money, the sponsors are getting the money, and you're just gambling, hoping you get a little bit in return. So it's flipped it on its head, and I'm so excited. I'm so happy, and I love being in this position. Now let me get into Zed a little bit and tell you what's going on with her. I'm calling her her because I think most brilliant things are female um, in nature. So we're going to talk about her. At the top here, it tells you how to get into racing. It talks about breeding, the marketplace where these NFTs are, which is on OpenSea.io. But here's the most important little drop down you're gonna need, the Learn tab. When you click on Learn and then you click on Get Started, it's going to take you into the guide, the Z guide, and it's going to explain step by step by step by step why you want to get into Z, what you can get from it, help you understand it, tells you exactly how to make money doing it and how to profit. So it's telling you where the community is, all that. Like this is a true knowledge base. Whoever created this really put some time into making sure that you can find some buy-in by explaining to you exactly what you need to know to get involved and make money. And I love that. So I just created, I recorded a video. It was like almost an hour long going through a plethora of all of these and explaining them. I'm not saying I'm not going to do that now, but I'm going to, I'm going to just break it out because I'm exhausted, like talking that long, but here we go. So from the welcome, it's telling you some basic features of this platform. It's saying if you click on this first tab and it like it clicks you directly through all of these and even the subcategories that fall under them. So it's telling you how to create a stable and you're going to create a stable by going through the MetaMask wallet and then creating a Z wallet. All right. It's telling you how to buy racehorse, telling you how to race your racehorses, how to breed racehorses and to understand the racing classes, progressions and scarcity. So when I click into the create your stable, it's immediately showing me how I need to get into get an email started with Zed or or connect your MetaMask wallet. So if you don't want to go to the email, you're going to have to connect a MetaMask wallet anyway to get to your Zed wallet. So you may as well skip the email step and go directly and connect to MetaMask. But let's not skip ahead. I think that this is all going a little bit ahead of where we really want to be which is buying or selling racehorses. Because once you have a stable, even if you don't have a staple, you can't even get into this game where the money is without actually buying a horse. So the horses are bought and sold on OpenSea, OpenSea.io. This is a NFT platform that sells a plethora of NFTs, and it just so happens Zed Run is hosted on OpenSea. And the way you know is you just start typing in the search Zed, and then Zed Run should pop up, and it has that nice little blue check after it. The same blue check you'll find on social media with Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, so you know it is legit. Um, just a quick segue into OpenSea, you can see, let me move myself out of the way here. You can see that there are 86,400 86, items, which are horses, available on Zed. There are 23,000 plus owners. The floor price, that means the cheapest price you're gonna get for a horse is 0.06 Ethereum. And this is the volume traded, um, I assume today, because I know there's a lot of activity on here, 26.5 thousand Ethereum. And then it lists all the different horses. Um, looks like it's starting from lowest to highest cost. And then over here, we have a lot of the factors that determine if your horse is gonna have any value, and we're gonna go into that a little later. Um, just to give you an idea of how much money is sitting in this platform, I'm gonna sort this by, this says hide a little bit, it obviously can't be because it started at 0.06. There we go. So high to low, some of these numbers are just BSing ASS numbers, and I don't know why they're there. So let's just skip this, all right? But once you get down to the 100 Ethereum or less, that's when you're getting into real um, competitive pricing on these horses. If you click through all these blocks, which actually takes you down this left side with the table of contents, it's taking you step by step and explaining to you 
what horses you can buy, why you're going to buy them, where you can buy them. It's really informative. So do your due diligence. Do your own research. Read through this whole thing. If this is something you're interested in, it will not take you long. I'm going to clip through most of it on this video. I will put time hacks in there. So if you know some of it, you know, whatever, it'll save you some time. Um, this says avoid purchasing fake Zed Run horses. Ensure you have the blue check from the official Zed Run site. It's reminding you that OpenSea charges a fee of 2.5% on all, um, let's see, this is all sales. And then Zed Run takes 2.5% as well. So that's 5% off of your purchase price that is going directly to the platforms, OpenSea and Zed, that own this ability to buy that. Um, once you open your wallet, you will have to make sure that you have WEF that's wrapped Ethereum. That is why you need that MetaMask. So you will transfer Ethereum from your main wallet, whatever it is, into your MetaMask wallet and then convert that into WEF in your Zed Run wallet. And that is how you're going to buy your horses. Okay. Um, it goes directly into some breeding information. It's talking about FAQs, frequently asked questions about breeding. It's a pretty like informative page. It kind of hits the highlights of what horses you can own, the gender of the horse, and how often those horses can breed per month and per year. This is very important because once you put your male horse in a stud farm, it's the first three that get it that wins. So even if you're trying to breed your own horse in your own stable with your own other horses, someone else can get in there and breed their horse with your horse. So this three number matters. And your female, once you, um, not stud her, but I guess you're breeding with her, she only gets once a month because she has to carry the fowl, right? So she's carrying that baby horse. She can only do it once a month. So this is going to help you build your investment strategy. I'm stopping here because investment strategy is important. Please, please, please don't watch my channel if you don't want to understand that in order to get into investing, you need to come up with a strategy. Before you do anything, before you buy that first horse, you get in here and start buying things, you need to know what is your goal. I'm going to help you do it. Let's go further. Um, it's setting up your breeding price. It's telling you how to determine what your breeding price is and the minimum prices that you will find. Uh, let me just open this page up. I will come back to it. I'm not going to look at it right now. But I want to see it because I want to remember to kind of take you there. All right, moving on. It's telling you how to breed with your own stable of horses. It's telling you what factors determine um, the horse's characteristics and what makes it appealing or not appealing. It's talking about colors of horses and how you, your color of your horse can determine its rarity and then increase its value all the way to where we're talking about a super coat. Well, basically a super coat horse is when the mother and the father are the exact same color and they make a offspring that is that exact color. That is a super coat that increases the value less than one half of a percent of horses on the platform have that characteristic. So back to what I should have mentioned in the beginning, crypto is very supply and demand. If you have, if there's a demand and you can fill the demand with your supply, then you will make money. Zed has created several layers of uniqueness that makes it different than a lot of other NFT platforms that can vary the value of the NFTs, the horses, so that they can be extremely valuable, very valuable, mid-range valuable, or okay valuable. Mm -hmm. And even in the midst of all of that, if you have a horse that races well, if you choose to race your horse, and you don't have to race it, but if you choose to race your horse, then you can still make money that way. So there's a lot of things in your favor if you know what to look for when you're first getting started. Um, it talks about the Genesis horse. I'm going to get into that too. The Genesis horse is the original horse in the Zed platform, which cannot be created and it cannot be reproduced. So what horse do you want to own on the Zed platform? A Genesis horse, right? Because it's limited in number, it's scarce, and it has a lot of value. They are expensive, but that is the horse you want to buy. So now let's talk about the horse's um, ability. What makes it a better race? Genesis and non-Genesis. The Genesis horse is the original, it's the supreme. It's important to note the levels of the uh, bloodline, the levels of the genotype, and then compare that between a Genesis horse and non-Genesis horse. And it just gives you some criteria to break it down.
Next, I want to go into um, the color pairs. I think I broke that out with a, what a super coat is and the different color pairings. Basically, again, just think a blonde and a brunette, a redhead, um, which is more rare than a blonde or a brunette. Um, so it makes it harder to get. And then if you get two rare types and you put those together, then that's a super coat, which is an even rarer type. So that can help inform the value of your horse. Let's talk about breeding limits. I think we discussed that already, but then the male horses can only stud three times a month, 36 times a year, female horses even less, one time a month and 12 times a year. And that's going to inform pricing. Now, when you're breeding your horse, you can own multiple horses, multiple genders and breed them within your own stable. Note that you set the breeding fee and when you're breeding within your own stable, you get a 35% discount on your own fee, all right? So you wanna set your breeding price at one Ethereum. That's super high, but I like round numbers. If you do it at one Ethereum, you will have that price discounted by 35%, meaning you will only pay 0.65 Ethereum to breed your horse. So I'm an intelligent person. I'm like, well, it's my horse, I'm breeding it. Why don't I just make the breeding costs um, 0.1 Ethereum, right? Um, despite the floors, there's floors on breeding. I think that's below the floor, but let's just do this. Let me, let me humor you for a second. I'll just say I'm going to breed my own horse for 0.1 Ethereum. Then I get 35% off of that. So I'm breeding my horse for next to nothing. Here's the problem with that strategy. When you are studying your horse on the stud farm, other horse owners on the Zed platform can swoop in and breed their female horse with your male horse. So your intent is to breed a female horse within your stable with your male horse of choice. However, once he's placed out there for one day, three days, or seven days, anyone else can kind of snipe in and get that horse. So if you set a very low breeding fee that you're trying to benefit for yourself, you go mess around and let some other person outside of your network get in and breed that horse for that exact same price. And that messes up in several ways. The first way is you're gonna use up your one, two or three times that month accidentally. The second, I said the first way. The second way is you're not gonna get the cost you really deserve off of breeding that horse. So if that horse breeds for half of Ethereum and you're trying to lower the fee so that you personally get a discount for your in-house breeding, you're just gonna jack yourself up. So it becomes like a dance of finding the right price to breed your horse so that you can pay the least fee so that you're gonna have an offspring and still get the money out of that offspring. But if someone comes in and breeds with that horse, you're gonna get the profit that you so deserve and would request. So when you breed in your own stable, of that 65% left of the price, 75% of that total goes to the prize pool. That is the money they're using to pay off um, the prize winnings in the race horses. And 30% goes to Zed. Zed is racking up that money. So in another video, I'm gonna talk about why I'm concerned about how much money Zed is taking out of the game, out of the platform, okay? Now if you choose to stud your horse outside of your own stable, here's how the fees are broken down. The stud owner, the male owner, is encouraged to leave the horse out there in the stud farm for longer than they get a larger cut of the stud fee. Um, a percentage goes to the owner, the longer, the better. A percentage goes to the prize pool, the longer, the less. So the longer you keep your horse out there, the owner gets more money, but then the prize pool gets less money. And then Zed gets 15% no matter what. We'll have another discussion about that, okay? <laughs> Breeding price allocations. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we pretty much covered that. We have minimum breeding price based on these five factors, the base breeding price, the bloodline of the sire, that's the male, the breed type of the male, the duration of the stud, and the breeding within your own stables. That makes up the difference. The base breeding fee is 0 0.075 Ethereum, and it only goes up from there. So that's the cheapest fee you can use to breed your horse. And you'll notice back on the open sea in the beginning that I showed you, some of these horses are priced at 0.07. So it costs you as much to breed it as to buy it 
and you're giving Zed fees on both. So you really need to be strategic about how you're going to enter the Zed platform if you choose to do so. So then it goes into racing. I'm not gonna cover racing, not that it's not important, not that it's not a nice revenue stream, but I want you to get these other basics down before we go down the racing rabbit hole. So now that we've kind of covered this, again, take your time, peruse this slowly, go through it slowly, so you can have a really good understanding of kind of the excitement that I feel when I look at this. So now let me click over here. So when you go to that Zed homepage and they're talking about the bloodlines, if you scroll down, it kind of takes you into the buy now, which takes you to OpenSea.io, as it says. And then also when it talks about some other things, it takes you to the community website. So this is the community website. Um, one of the benefits is it kind of gives the platform a chance to explain to you why they think they're special, all right? Not just why you think they're special, why they think they're special. And it's all right here in the mission. The mission of Zed is to create an ecosystem where collectible digital assets hold value and have use in an exciting and ever evolving gaming and wagering environment. They go on to say at Zed, we truly want to give meaning to digital asset ownership that everyone can understand. We are hell bent on creating an emotional connection with your digital asset, something you can nurture and create a legacy with. Zed is just the beginning. That's it in a nutshell. This is why I fell in love with them. Instead of it being some art that you can't even hang on your wall or some weird looking thing that represents something that people supposedly want, but it really has no value to you. This is taking that to a whole nother level, turning it on its head, making it more valuable, making it different ways you can make money off of it, getting people involved in different ways. And it's dynamic. And it's that uh, dynamicness that's going to make me want to get into it and hopefully make money from it. Also on the community page, there's a bit of a blog, so you can see some highlights of contests coming up, um, highlights of contests that have already played out, and et cetera, et cetera. So new tracks, new horses. So this is the, the racing side of it's huge, and that's why I didn't go into it, because I would have done it no justice telling you about the races, because I'm not even really into the racing. I'm all about the buying of the expensive horses and breeding more expensive horses. And I showed you the Z.Ranks site. And this is just telling you the um, price of the horse, pricing info and the floor prices. So this will give you a good idea of where you need to start with when you're thinking of buying a horse. If you want that money, you really want that money and you can afford it, start looking at these Genesis horses, okay? They are scarce, they are rare, they are more expensive, but they're gonna get you more money and they're gonna race better if that's what you choose to do. Finally, I'm going to talk about, um, it's going to take you into OpenSea, um, the Zed Run platform. We already rent into this horse, and you can kind of see that this is a pretty good horse. Nightly Pleasure is her name. Nightly Pleasure is her name. A little double entendre there. And you can see why she'd be a good horse to own. But in order to get what you want out of her, you know, you're going to have to, you might have to wait a while. And this one was minted fresh. Oh, so this one's being sold by Zed. This one ain't even been on the market yet. All right. So to see, you see all the plethora of horses here. So there's 86,000 horses available on here. You can break that down further by saying, I want a Nakamoto. Then you can say, and I'm, I'm going for the top, right? I'm going to the top line. I want a Genesis. I want, I won't pick the color because I know what color I want. And because I want to be able to stud them, I want a stallion or a colt. So I want the male horse. Ooh, let's go down one more level. Let's talk about the genotype. I want a Z2 or a Z3. And that's gonna narrow it down. So this is my criteria. Genesis, Nakamoto, male horse, um, older or younger, Z2 or Z3. Here's where I'm looking at. And then let me just price low to high. Let's see what happens, right? This is what I do when I'm looking for sales. I do low to high. I don't do high to low <laughs> when I'm buying clothes or whatever. And it looks like the lowest priced horse that fits those categories is eight Ethereum. Time to pack. Let's see what time to pack got going on. All right, time to pack. 
Eight Ethereum, current price $25,000. It is a Nakamoto. That's the top bloodline. It is a Genesis. That is the top breed. Beautiful color. I'm an Aquarius. This is my stone. It's like she's calling my name. Oh, he. He's calling my name. And it's a Z2. But you can see down here that this horse was minted by Zed. And it was sold for 3.5 Ethereum five months ago. So now you can see um, how the value has increased over time. Three and a half Ethereum for a Z2 Nakamoto. This is saying a Z2 Genesis should go for about 10 Ethereum, all right? So on average, I mean, just at face value, this is a steal. You'd have to do a little more research and kind of dig in here, but this is kind of a steal. And you can see some people want this already. Somebody's already offered six Ethereum. The beauty of OpenSea is if you don't have six Ethereum in your wallet, you can't even bid on this thing. So this is money sitting in people's wallet making these offers. All the owner has to do is boom, is accept it and it's theirs, okay? So you can buy now and that. So this is what they're going for. It's only had one owner thus far and we are moving on. It has the actual contract address in there to show you where your NFT is located. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you get uh, a 10th or 20th of what I've gotten out of it. I am super excited to get into this. I was super hesitant to get into NFTs in general because I didn't like them. I didn't quite understand where the value was. But in this platform, in Zed.run, I can see the value. All I have to do is my part is pump it up, right? Because the larger the community, the more people in it, the more money we can make. In another video, I'm gonna talk about how much money Zed's making off of this and why I'm not a big fan when they are trying to grow, right? They should be under a growth strategy. And I think they're under a profit strategy because they are taking that money, baby. They're getting that money out of there. It's kind of like, um, what do they say that? Like sketchy-ish, I don't like it, but let's hope they're doing the right thing with their money. There was a recent infusion of $20 million by some investors into Zed. So this point, it's going somewhere. Just like I say about Bitcoin, Ethereum, this is going somewhere and you wanna get it on the bottom up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Invest in NFTs if it's your thing and invest in yourself, most importantly, 1% a day to reach your exponential greatness. This is Teddy Ewing signing off.